I'm lucky enough to have been co-curator of Big Green Week earlier this year. Quick show of hands, who came to Big Green Week? Mm, four out of ten could do better, I think, from that. So it is going to happen next year. I hope you all come to Big Green Week 2013. Our aim uh, to deliver the world's biggest and best festival of sustainability um, over a probably a five-year period. Uh, we're well on our way. We had about 40,000 people involved, not least of all because BNHC were a major partner in that and uh, ran the Festival of Nature as part of Big Green Week. However, what I wanted to talk about in terms of communications some of our issues, uh, when we piloted it, uh, we called it Good Living Week, deliberately to move away from the, uh, this sort of green tinge. Uh, our sponsors this time round said, no, we want, to, we want to call it what it is, we want to call it Big Green Week. Um, so... It is an issue that it's got green in the title. It puts a lot of people off. Um, actually, uh, a lot of our partners want people to come to Bristol to come to a festival. We're saying the world's biggest. We want lots of people. So there's a real issue there about travelling to the festival. Um, it's the, the mode of operating it is about partnership. It's a compendium of lots of different partners' propositions that we put together into nine days. You, there's no way we could just run a nine-day festival. You have to put it together. But that brings with it lots of mixed messages. Um, and the other thing was that it's an absolutely tiny budget uh, for, the, for the size of festival that was put on. The costs were around about £140,000. Of that, we had 10000 for marketing in total. Um, so, uh, what did we try and do? Well, we tried to go to where our audience was. So, the first weekend was about having a market. Um, the criticism would be that the vast majority of people that came to that market didn't know they were, they were coming to Big Green Week. But it was an opportunity to, for us to engage with people in a way that they would enjoy. Um, use people that can, uh, that can act as a bridge. Uh, Vivian Westwood here came uh, to Bristol to talk uh, about sustainability. But of the 200 people in the audience, I'd say that 150 of them were there because she's a fashion icon. They had no idea we were going to talk to them about sustainability. Um, and then uh, Vivian rammed sustainability down their throat for an hour. I'm not kidding. Um, you could see people, what the hell's going on? But uh, it was a really fantastic bridge for, for, for us to get out to the audiences. The only trouble was that it was slightly difficult on occasion to get to stick the message. Um, the other thing was that we were a very, very small team with mostly volunteers involved. And it was incredibly important for us to work with some strategic partners. Um, I can't stress that highly enough. So uh, Destination Bristol did an amazing job of dealing with bus company, rail travel, that kind of thing, hotels, etc. Because they bought into the process, they just did it. There wasn't a, a large management overhead. Um, we did start to engage with First Group, boo hiss, uh, but they um, hope they aren't here. Um, uh, uh, they, they actually they did really come on board with it, and that's how we got free posters between here and London. There was one at Paddington Station as well. We couldn't have done that otherwise. And then our sponsors. If Wessex Water puts out a a note to their customers, that was twenty, thirty, forty times the amount of people that we could communicate with, and that was just a very small thing that they could put into their, their magazine. It's incredibly important to have those strategic partners on board. Uh, but the reality was uh, that this was our saviour, Lucy, who, uh, towards the end of the process, um, actually, not on loan, is that still here? Came from Futera. And it was, made me realise just how important it was to have a communications Expert, a real professional on board. She came in uh, uh, largely volunteering, but brought with her the absolute clarity about the basics and forced us into having the comms pack, the media messages, um, those things that were absolutely essential, but we kind of overlooked because we were running a festival. She also had the strength of character to just say, um, this is the message. Um, so we did all of that basic stuff, and Lucy got a huge amount of coverage for us. But actually, the last bit really is about if you haven't got any money, you have to be creative. And to our surprise, Bristol Beer offered to name one of their beers after something to do with the festival. And then Jack FM picked it up, and they did a radio show about naming this beer. And to our absolute surprise, this beer thing just took off. For three days, they were talking about Big Green Week. Gert Greenan, I think, was the eventual winner. Um, uh, it didn't cost us a thing. 
Um, and then, just then, to talk about the Bristol Mermaid. So, you can now swim in the docks. And there was this, this story that we developed about the fact that that might lure a, the Bristol Mermaid back to Bristol. So we invented a Bristol Mermaid. Um, and this is a 100-year-old photograph of the Bristol Mermaid when she was last in Bristol when the water was good. Um, here is a, a more recent photo of the Bristol Mermaid in the Avon Gorge. And here is a photo on one of the Bristol ferries. Um, and it all seems a bit frivolous, but uh, we had a blog, we had a Twitter page, we had uh, Facebook, uh, we even had something on the UK Labradoodle Association page. <laughs> The, the, the point is that you just no idea until you do something interesting that just starts to spread out uh, in ways that you can't possibly imagine. Um, but what it did mean was that we got some mainstream press that we probably wouldn't have got if we put the usual picture of, of bird and, birds and bees up there. There was, an, there was an environmental message behind it. It was about the water quality in the docks. So there we are. Um, and even Greenpeace picked it up. Uh, for part of their campaign as well, which was really lovely uh, to come out of it. I'm going to finish with, actually, uh, Futera, a, a statement that Ed made earlier on. Uh, if we are not enjoying it more than everyone else, then why the hell would they want to come and play with us in Solitaire Townsend? Thank you very much.